Hi, it's Lindley Oz and I'm hiking through the muddy, soupy, soilless, cornless cornfield on the way to the new tarp shelter. And I'm hoping we'll have some nice fireside chat discussion. It's a very difficult hike. It's a very difficult hike because it's so muddy, look. That's what I'm hiking through. So it's no fun. Yeah, pretty muddy. So I will meet you here shortly, here at the tarp shelter. See you in just a moment. So I have to admit this walk is extra exciting because of the roughness of the terrain, the swampiness. It's very warm out today. I think it's in the 60s, so it feels pretty nice. So we're going to go to the new tarp shelter. Ugh. This is what I have to walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, here's another one. A little stream I have to cross. So up the hill here, as you can see, and then around the corner. And then, God willing, I will be at the tarp shelter. So I will see you there in just a moment. Okay, so we are finally at the tarp shelter, the new one. You can see the creek is that way. You can see the creek is that way. The tarp shelter and the wood shelter is this way. There's my homemade fire pit. Let's go look at the creek real quick, just for fun, before we get started. Yeah, she's up pretty high. Look at that. Flowing pretty good too. Looks really muddy. All right, well, I guess I'll get set up, up at the tarp shelter. I guess I'll make a small fire. It's a little bit warm today, so. Ah, you can see the other shelter over there. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right. Well, I'm going to get set up and I'll be right back with you. Here's the fire pit. I know I'm at a really weird angle here, but I know I'm at a really weird angle here, but I'm trying to adjust the camera so you can see me talking to you and the fire at the same time. So it's kind of a weird angle. But at least you can see a little bit of it. Let's see if I can get it a little bit better. Eh, I don't know. So there you can see the fire and me sitting here talking to you. Okay, I'm sitting down. I still don't have the microphone plugged in. I haven't made the fire yet. So the audio might not be that good. Whew. It's been a while since I recorded out here. So I'm going to go ahead now and make a small fire, pour some coffee, and then we'll start recording and I will get my microphone plugged in so that my audio is better. It's a windy day out here today. It's warm, it's in the 60s, but it's really nice out here. It may not be sunny, but it is very nice. I've been out here for a while now playing with the camera, trying to get it in the right position so that you can see the fire. So this wasn't my ideal direction I'm facing. I'm facing the creek right now, but I tried a bunch of different stuff and it just looked too weird. So I went with this. So you can see the fire behind me. Looks nice. It's not really that cold today. There is a slight chill in the air, but it's very nice. So I'm happy for all of you to join me out here at the tarp shelter. I've got my coffee. Each and every day is a day to celebrate your new life in Jesus Christ. And don't let your fire burn out. Keep it going. You know, I think about the fire behind me or the fire at the fire pit at my house. And, you know, we have to keep adding more wood to the fire to keep it going. More fuel to the fire. Well, God's word and praise and worship and spending time with the Lord in prayer is how we add fuel to our fire. And if we don't continue spending time in God's word and we don't continue praising him, worshiping him, and we don't continue spending time in prayer with him, well then 
our fire will go out and that's not a good thing so what are some of the ways that you are keeping your fire burning how are you adding fuel to your fire to keep it going because the fire of the Lord is within us we have the Holy Spirit we're the living breathing walking talking temples of God or Ark of the Covenant you know it's a real sacrifice many of us are busy with things but the number one thing that we should make time for every day our number one priority should be spending quality time with the Lord in his word and prayer and praise and worship that should be a daily thing and not just a daily thing but several times a day as much as you can possibly do it by the way off the subject I am dealing with quite a bit of wind today and I have a spare microphone my other one decided to stop working so while I was recording and that was a few videos ago so this one doesn't seem to conceal the wind quite as well so I apologize you can see the tarp moving around behind me at the tarp shelter there so it was an awfully muddy hike out here I have to say that very soupy muddy it was a lot of exercise and I like that you know it's nice to get some good exercise get out of the house kind of be home away from home the view I'm looking at right now is beautiful I kind of wish I could have the camera the other direction and then you can see the lovely view that I'm looking at but then I will have people who complain because they can't see the fire so oh well it's a toss-up can't win for losing sometimes I really thought that was some good advice on how we can keep the fire of the Lord continuing to burn within us maybe you guys have some ideas on what works for you or what would work for you the enemy Satan is always trying to come along and snuff out our flame put it out do whatever he can create stumbling blocks cause confusion and chaos and turmoil strife hurt pain anguish depression whatever anything he can do in our lives he will try to cause in order to take our focus off the Lord and to snuff our flame out so when things begin to happen in our lives that depress us upset us anger us hurt us or whatever we kind of have to look at it because Ephesians 6 10 through 20 tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against the powers of hell spiritual forces of wickedness in high places so we have to remember when things come against us the devil will use situations people whatever he can in order to tear us down break us down make us roadkill whatever and we have to stand up and be strong we really do I mean here we are in the end times and we're at the very end I don't know about you but I don't want to be spiritual roadkill that's the last thing I want to do and the last place I want to be I want to be walking down the path I may get tired and my feet may get heavy I may have blisters on my feet but when Jesus returns I want to be standing in faith and walking and continuing to walk with him following down the path that leads heavenward following down the path of Jesus Christ amen now I'm sure many of you from time to time just like me ask yourselves or you ask the Lord why why is all this happening to me why do I have it so hard why don't things get easier for me is God mad at me well the answer is simple the devil that's right we live at what is temporarily till Jesus comes back the devil's domain and we're strangers here in this land and we live in the land of darkness sin and corruption trying to live righteously because Jesus died for us therefore he made it to where we can live righteously and he made it to where we can get through with the strength that comes from the Holy Spirit and we can get through things and we can call upon him and we can petition God through him and through his death and resurrection otherwise God wouldn't even hear our prayers if it wasn't for Jesus Christ 
We could never go to the throne of God because we could never be clean enough to do so. So praise the Lord for the gift he gave us in Jesus Christ. So here comes a gust of wind now. So going out to the tarp shelter is not glamorous. So if you're watching this, you're thinking about making YouTube videos and you want to look perfect on camera or glamorous or whatever, don't do what I do. Because I'm telling you, you will get your hands dirty. You will get your hair windblown. You might even possibly get pooped on by birds. I've had that happen while I was filming. That was at the other tarp shelter. I think it was last year or year before last. A whole bunch of blackbirds flew over and you could hear them. Like there was like hundreds of them. And I was sitting there and all of a sudden you could hear it splattering and it splattered right on my leg. Yeah, while I was filming. So I had my cup of coffee in my hand, but I did have my hand over the cup of coffee because I didn't feel very secure with my open cup of coffee while that many birds were flying over. So like I said, if you're one of these people that just wants to look good, Anyways, if you're one of these people that just wants to look good on camera, this isn't what you want to do. Stay in the studio with your special lighting because the sunlight or the natural light will show every pore on your face. Yeah. So anyways, I put my light jacket on. Well, it's mediocre. It's not light and it's not heavy because there is a slight chill in the breeze so let me just turn to a bible passage let's read something i don't know do something i just wanted to include you guys why i came back here today i really didn't have a particular message but i wanted to include y'all ah psalm 131 it's a short one what does it say it says oh lord my heart is not proud nor my eyes haughty nor do i involve myself in great matters or in things too difficult for me. Surely I have composed and quieted my soul. Like a weaned child rests against his mother, my soul is like a weaned child within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. What would we do without our hope in the Lord? Hmm. I would have gone literally insane well before now if I didn't have God. I don't know how people in the world who don't have Jesus even get through things without him because there are some pretty difficult things where it was like day to day I made it through, but I only made it through day to day because I had Jesus with me and I could lean on him and take comfort in him and take comfort in his words and in his promises. Here's a short one, Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all nations, laud him, all peoples, for his loving kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord is everlasting. Praise the Lord. His loving kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord is everlasting. He keeps his promises. He is a God who does not go back on his promises. But I'm telling you what, my backside and my butt is like getting really baked through the back of this chair by the fire behind me. Wow. Whew. The word of God. The word of God. I'm sure there's somebody out there who needed to hear the words that I just read from the Psalms in the Bible because God's word is powerful. You know, it is truth. It is our guide. It is our instruction manual. It is our hope. It is the strength of our salvation, his word. And sadly, there's many people who are not feeding on the word of God, either enough or at all. As I gave in the example earlier about adding fuel to your fire, how do you expect to make it through this life? in the Lord if you're not feeding on his word 
because his word is truth that is very very important it is an integral part of our walk with him and all of us I, and I keep encouraging this I know there's some of you out there watching this that are sick of hearing me say it I know there's some of you out there watching this who are sick and tired of hearing me go on about it but there's someone that might stumble across this video who's never seen my other videos for one secondly even if you've heard it a gazillion times you need to get it into your head so if there's going to be brainwashing going on why not brainwash with the truth of god's word and keep telling you to do something that you ought to do so i don't usually get to watch a lot of other people's videos because i'm too busy studying the Bible, praying, figuring out what the Lord wants for the next message, editing videos, exporting videos, uploading videos, answering emails to the best of my ability, <sighs> answering messages on Facebook Messenger, which that's a never ending thing right there. I can't even, yeah. But I also am human, so I have human things I have to do. But, uh, I was watching a video Doug Diamond put out. Very interesting. I did not know this, but no one knows the day or the hour is actually another name for, and I'll put it on the screen if I say it wrong, so look at the screen. If nothing appears, then I have said it correctly. I'm going by my memory. It means Feast of Trumpets. Again, if I'm wrong, look on the screen. I'll have the correction there. I didn't know that and I also was not totally aware I knew a little bit I'd heard about it but the book of Genesis the days of creation the seven days of creation are actually very prophetic learn something new every day so that was a really interesting video I'm gonna put the link below this video in the video description so as you begin to watch it Doug gives his background some information about him and then he goes into the message and you'll think it's date setting. You really will. And I'm not a date setter. I never set dates. I don't even set seasons. I just don't do that. But I have to admit, this guy's on to something. So I'm gonna encourage you to watch it, see what you think. It'll be in the video description. I can tell you one thing for sure, we're close. We are really close. And many of us have a feeling that something is about to happen. Something. Something significant. Something big. Something massive. Something horrendous. Something frightening. Something earth-shaking. Something blood-curdling. Something hair-raising. Spine-tingling. All right, is that enough? <laughs> uh, yeah. So many of us have it laid on our hearts. That something detrimental to the end times is going to take place soon. It's like the calm before the storm. There is a lot of uncalmness going on in the world. But at the same time, there seems to be a calm. Like we're waiting on something. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't or I would. Like it's a feeling like we're just sitting here waiting. Like I'm in a waiting room waiting to go see the doctor to find out if I have some deadly disease. Maybe that's the best way to put it. That's how it feels, at least to me. So, yeah, I'm telling you, things are gonna happen. I guess the biggest question is, are you ready? And I don't mean, are you ready as in physically prepared, like you got enough stash of food and toilet paper. God forbid you run out of toilet paper, you won't be able to wipe. But uh, I'm talking about being spiritually prepared. Prepared spiritually, spiritual preparedness. Are you right with the Lord? And if you're ready to say automatically, like upon me asking that question, if you're instantly going, oh yes, yes, yes. That's a red flag. I'm constantly praying and asking myself and searching the scriptures. Am I really ready? I'm always asking that question and my answer is never instantaneous. If you're honest, you would say, well, there's always room for improvement 
and I feel like I'm ready, but then again, I don't really know what to expect. You know, it's like going on a backpacking trip and making sure that you've got everything, but then once you're on the trip, you realize you forgot some very important things that you desperately need for your trip. And without them, you can't even survive on your trip. It's kind of what it's like. You really need to go overboard, making sure that you're ready. Because I think it's going to be worse than what many of us really have even imagined. I really do. I think it's going to be worse than we've imagined. Stock up on coffee. That's very important. If you're going to stock up, stock up on coffee over toilet paper. Because you can always make do with a stick or something if you have to. Or there's grass outside in your yard or leaves or whatever. But don't go without coffee. I'm just kidding. I really am. Honestly, I'm just kidding. I say your best bet is to stock up on printer paper. Because we always need printer paper for something. And worst case scenario, you can wad it up tons of times until it's kind of like... paper towel consistency all right I'm just kidding again maybe the answer is one of those bidets that you buy to install in your toilet I hear you can also brush your teeth with it or spray out your mouth I don't really understand how that works but I can honestly tell you that doesn't sound good to me to put something that has to do with my toilet into my mouth but people swear that it's good end times end times we are in the end times the day is at hand the hour is near time is short how many of us have been hearing that for many many years Jesus is coming soon we've all been hearing that like I just said for many many years but the truth of the matter is that we are really right here at the very end this time. It's our lack of knowledge and lack of ability for whatever reason to really get into God's word. And when people are saying that to find out, are we really in the end times? You know, is that really true? Could could Jesus come or things ready? Because back in the 80s or the 90s, you know, had we researched, we would have realize well there's a whole bunch of things that still have to happen before that comes well now those things have happened so here we are and there are you and we're here together at this moment well not really but when I upload this video it will be as if we are together you know life kind of reminds me sometimes of Campbell's soup tomato soup or maybe split pea with ham and bacon one of the two You know, you ever try to, it's kind of like one of those times you get hungry and there's nothing to eat. And because there's nothing to eat, you grab that can of soup you've had in your cabinet for like maybe years. And then you turn it upside down. And this is why I say tomato soup or split pea with ham and bacon. And it just doesn't want to come out. So then if you poke a hole in the bottom of the can and you give it a shake, it'll, it'll go like, and then it just falls out in one blob I did that once bad experience I was young I was like 19 I was an idiot I turned the can upside down drew my hand back with a butcher knife that's right and then went to poke a hole in the can missed the can and split open my hand between my thumb and my uh, index finger and you could see all the way down in there I'll never forget that. Never did that again. That was stupid. So the reason I say that life reminds me of that is because sometimes our lives get to that point where it just feels like it is, you know, like, like bored, like boring, dull. All right. I can go one direction or the other, but I need to do something because I'm just sitting here. You know, so then you kind of break through or feel like you're having a breakthrough, thus the representation of the hole in the bottom of the can. 
So you feel like you're having a breakthrough and then you shake, 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 trying to make something happen. And then all of a sudden everything just comes at you at once and life is no longer boring. And it's not exactly what you wanted either. In fact, at that point in time, you're wishing that you could just go back to being bored. And I don't really know what this example means or what it has to do with, but I'm sure there's someone out there that that story touched deeply. The Campbell's soup, tomato, split pea with ham and bacon, knife in the hand, and along with the sound effects of, or what was it? Wait, or maybe it was, yeah, it was. So maybe that blessed somebody out there. You know, for those of us who are born again and bought with the blood of Jesus, we should never say we're bored because there's always something to do. There's always something to read in the Bible. And even if you've read it once, you go back and learn something new you didn't catch the other time. There's always uh, prayers that need prayed, people that need prayed for. Go do something good for someone. Go help someone. Do something. But a lot of Christians get bored. Well, what happens when we get bored? A lot of times when we get bored, that's when we go sin. Because we're bored and looking for something to do. And then we set our minds on the wrong things. Or we go searching for something to do. And we come across something we shouldn't be looking at. Something we shouldn't be doing. And so we can't allow ourselves to get bored that way. Do something godly. Do what the Bible tells you to do when you get bored. And then you don't have to be so vulnerable to let the devil in and tempt you into sin. Well, at least I told you in advance that this video I'm recording that you're watching, if you're still here watching it at this point, is there's something blowing in the tree that looks weird. It's like a head of an animal detached, hanging and bobbling at me, but I think it's a leaf. Anyhow, at least I warned you that this video had no point today. I didn't really have a message to give. I just wanted to come out to the tarp shelter. And I thought, you know, if I'm at the tarp shelter hanging out, I could bring you guys with me and hang out with you and just sit here. And, you know, when you're watching this, it's like I'm talking to you. But in actuality, if there was somebody around and I didn't know, like maybe somebody hunting out here or whatnot, it would just appear that I'm sitting here talking to myself, drinking coffee, which probably looks pretty weird. I guess I will not take up any more of your time. I think there were some good points in this video to ponder about our walk with the Lord and about keeping ourselves busy in the Lord. Again, when we let ourselves just get bored and we're not doing anything, we're not producing fruit, we tend to get involved in sin, whether it be gossip, thinking about things we shouldn't think about, doing things we shouldn't be doing. And we need to always be spending as much time as possible in the Word of God, in prayer, in praise, and in worship. That's very important. So think about it, because our time is very short. Time is of the essence. All of us know, well, those of us who are keeping our eyes open, we know positively something is getting ready to happen here in the near future. Am I saying tomorrow or next week or next month? No. I'm saying I feel like something is going to happen this year at some point. I don't know, but I really feel like it is. I feel it. I feel it in my spirit. Many of you all feel it too. So now I've turned the camera around and I'm now facing the fire and I was leaning over the fire. Now my neck is all red from the heat of the fire. So now you can officially call me a redneck. That's what they call a lot of us. People who live in Ohio are rednecks. It's a slang term. It's a slang term if you're not familiar with it. See, my neck is red. So it's been really nice hanging out with you guys here today at the tarp shelter. Again, I apologize. This isn't some totally inspiring video or I don't know, churchy video, or I don't have a particular message type of a video, kind of a silly video to be honest, but I just felt like hanging out here today. Like I said, wanted to bring y'all with me and let you see the tarp shelter. I might, before I end the video, walk around a little bit. Just wanted to bring you guys out here with me because I only made one video out here 
months ago, back at the beginning of fall, the trees were really pretty. I really haven't made any other videos back here at all, and I just felt like getting out today. It's warm out today, it was nice. I know many of you guys out there are going through things, and it's hard. We all go through things, and it, it's hard when we go through stuff, and it's natural sometimes when we go through stuff, we feel like God has abandoned us, or God's mad at us, or God isn't hearing us, just please remember the Bible tells us over and over, despite what apostate churches have taught us, the Bible tells us over and over as God's people living on this earth that we will suffer affliction. We will go through things. We will be hated. We will be persecuted. Life won't be easy for us. So while it's always a good idea to do a heart check with the Lord and ask him to reveal anything to you and search your heart to see if there's anything you need to repent for. That's always a good idea. It's always possible you're just going through stuff because the devil hates you and we live on his domain presently until Jesus comes back, like I said earlier, and you're suffering because you're a child of God. And that's always a possibility, a great possibility, because the Bible does tell us that. Remember to prayerfully and carefully search the truth each and every day for yourself and know the truth because the truth shall make you free. Okay, so I wanted to show you around the tarp shelter a little bit. Just the area is so much different in person than when you're seeing it, you know, on a camera. But it's really pretty. There's the wood shelter. And then maybe you can see back through here. There's like a little trail that goes back through there that's nice. We'll go ahead and walk back there a little bit and see. Oh, what this is sticking up from the ground. Huh? Sorry, there was something sticking up in the ground. So it's real pretty through here. You can walk down through there and go down to the creek from that direction. And then the creek is down there. And then here's where I was sitting talking to you guys. So very nice. And there's a little sign I made you can see and then there's the path to the creek and now we're going up and out so thanks very much for joining me today at the tarp shelter it's been really nice having you with me again I know the conversation was probably somewhat possibly boring but it was just nice you know going out there by myself and taking you guys along with me to enjoy it God bless all of you. Don't forget to get into the word of God, get into prayer, get into praise and worship, offer up the sacrifice of praise. See you guys next time. Here I'm hiking through the uh, soy field. I'm by the tower and I saw this. We're gonna come up on a really cool spot. Here we go. You guys can see right down here how pretty it is. really looking forward to spring. Here we go. Isn't that nice? All right, just wanted to share that with y'all.